The addition of split warp in the recent update brought more accurate and complex distortions to Photoshop using a customizable mesh. In this video, I will walk you through everything you need to know about this awesome feature and how you can use it completely non-destructively, even when messing around with photos of your friends. Okay, so on the left side here we have the original photo and on the right side you can see the distorted caricature version. And that's not even the final version that we are going to do in this tutorial. So make sure you stay till the end to see the final result, which will not only use split warp, but will also add an additional puppet warp on top of it. But let's start from the beginning and I'm going to first extract this guy from the original background. It's a very simple background, I intentionally chose this photo, but of course you can do this with more complex backgrounds as well, you just will have to work a little bit harder with the extraction of the subject. Now, thanks to the subject select feature, which relies on artificial intelligence, most of the times you will get a good result and it does it very quickly like that. The next step I will do is to separate this from the background. So I will press Command or Control J. So now it's on a separate layer and we can check how it looks. I feel like the only detail that we need to fix is this part here. So I will just use the eraser tool and just very quickly get rid of this. Now, if you want to be more precise and you want to work non-destructively, you can always use a mask and just brush it out until it gets perfect, but I'm happy with the result like this. And I'm going to now hide this new layer and focus on the background where I will quickly create a rectangular selection. So using the rectangular marquee tool and then press shift backspace to get to the fill dialog box where I will use content aware. Once I click OK, this is going to get rid of everything. I think it's done a really good job once again, thanks to the fact that it's a very simple background. But what I will want to do is to preserve the shadows, so the cast shadows, because without them, it feels too floaty and it doesn't look natural. So what I will do now is to have that background layer turned on and go to the history panel. And you can see that the original photo was actually much wider, so that's how it looked like. But because I already done a crop, for the history brush to work, I will have to choose a different source. So this one just after the crop, which is going to make it work now. So if I use the brush and paint over around here, a bit further down, I can reveal the shadows. And I think that's going to be enough because the feet is not going to move much. But if I zoom a little bit closer, maybe I can be a little bit even more careful and just really concentrate on the shadows. This is again a technique I don't often use, but it's good to know that you have access to it. And now we have the two things on separate layers and it's going to work quite nicely. So it doesn't look like we've done anything at this point, but we have our subject on a separate layer, which was very important, and it doesn't have anything around it. And to be honest, for both the puppet warp and the split warp to work better, it's actually better to delete the background and not keep it as a mask. So almost every time I would recommend to use a mask, apart from this technique, because you will get a better fit for all the distortions that we are going to apply when there's no background visible, so completely transparent, removed. Now, let's rename this layer, I just call it Guy, and I'm going to turn it into Smart Object. That's a very important step, convert to Smart Object, because we would like to keep all the distortions non-destructive, so we'll be able to make changes to it later on. Now, what we need to use is the Free Transform tool, Command or Control T, and then if we go into the Warp option. This is now much more advanced thanks to the latest update in the 2020 version. We can do much more complex and more specific warps by using the split options up here. Now you can always choose a grid which will give you something similar to how it used to look like before. You can go more higher so have more mesh points or you can go into the custom option or default and you can of course still use these default shapes that we had before like arc and flag and all kinds of other fun stuff. But let's just reset this. So I will click on this icon here and I'm going to do everything using keyboard shortcuts. So I will zoom a little bit closer 
And the first thing that you would want to do if you want to turn someone into more like a caricature is to make the head bigger. So the proportions will have to change. Now for this, I'm going to create a frame around the head. So holding down the Alt key, you can define new mesh points. So let's just put one here. I will put another one maybe somewhere around there. And this already generates mesh points up here and also at the bottom. So we don't have to worry about that. But then I would like to have another line edit here. And notice, if I go further away from all the existing split lines, it's going to generate both a vertical and a horizontal line. But if I keep close to existing split lines, then it's going to create either only a horizontal or only a vertical line. So this is exactly what I need. I need another horizontal line here for the chest. And then I will do the same thing around here near the waist. And these are important because we will also want to make the hands larger. Once again, another trait of caricatures. So let's just add another one there. So almost like a bounding box I generated around the hand. And here on the right side, this is not perfect. So maybe I will just undo this last step and go further down just to make sure we fit the hand in that bounding box there. And this is pretty much all we had to do. So now if I just zoom a little bit further out, I can make my first distortion and select these four points here on the top. Now it's a really cool technique that you can make selections one by one and then holding down the shift key, you can add them to your selection. Or you can also hold down the shift key and make a marquee selection, which will again will be added to your current selection. If you do the same thing again, it can also remove those points from the selection. So now that we have this selected, we can move this around easily already. But the coolest thing is that we can resize it without affecting all the other parts of the image. So if I increase it, it does it automatically from the center point. Uh, so I just drag it out like that, drag it up a bit, uh, maybe make it slightly bigger. And by the way, you can even rotate it if you go a bit further away, you can add some rotation. But for now, I'm going to keep it somewhere around there. And also notice that when you select individual points after this, you will actually see these little handles. So if I zoom closer, you probably can see it better. So there's a handle there. Now this doesn't make much difference, but maybe if I come here, you can see the difference. If I start moving these around, you can see how I can adjust the details further. So I can push the shoulders up a bit, maybe this one as well, and so on and so forth. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe Certified Online Training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. Now to make this caricature more interesting, I would like to make the hands larger as well. So I am going to make a selection here. So select these points one by one, holding down the shift key, make sure that they turn all black and then increase the size and push it out a bit, something like that. Now we can also make the shoulders wider here just to make him a little bit more muscular and just to work better with those large hands. Once again, this is a caricature so we can mess around with these details. I'm going to just increase the size of that hand as well. Push it out a bit somewhere around there and then maybe just move this point out a bit and these points I can drag back just so the waist is not getting too wide. Now if we zoom out, we can already see how this looks. So if I accept the transformation, this is after and I can do a quick before after comparison using the default shortcuts, Control or Command Z and then Control or Command Shift Z to redo. 
Now notice that the transformation that we apply doesn't show up here under the smart object like most of the other smart filters even like the puppet warp but it is still non-destructive so if I use again command or control T to get back to the free transform option and click on the warp tool here on the top I will still see everything there so it's all intact and I can come back and make changes to every distortion that I used. I can even delete points if I wanted to. Let's just say I'm going to select this point here. If I press backspace, I can delete it. And that will remove all the other associated mesh points as well. If I press escape, I can cancel out of this so I can still keep it the way it was. And the cool thing about using a smart object is that it's not only going to give you the split warp as a non-destructive feature, but you can also stack other distortions on top of it, like the puppet warp feature. So if I go into edit puppet warp, I can start adding a couple of pinpoints here. And let's just add one here, another one there. Then we can add another one on the waist. Let's just add two on the hands and two on the feet. And with this, we can already start moving the character around, make him dance. <laughs> and also don't forget that with these pinpoints, if you hold down the alter option key, you can also do rotation. So you can really quickly and easily change the pose and see how everything interacts. Even though there are pinpoints, there's still slight rotations and changes applied on the whole body. But I'm going to keep it probably here roughly in the center and I just wanted to show you another really cool thing about puppet warp which is also something not everyone knows about. So if I select this point for example and I start moving the hand around you can see it can come in front of the body and I'm going to select this other point as well which will do exactly the same thing but if I come up here and use this icon a couple of times I can make sure that this point actually moves the hand behind the body. So that point is lower in the stacking order compared to the other one. But if I select these two together and move them around, I can do the swish move. So one hand comes in front, the other hand moves behind the body. And if I maybe also add this to the selection, and by the way, I'm doing this with the shift key. So adding the points, there is the dance move which obviously too much of a distortion, but it just shows you that you can have the pinpoints in different alignment within the stacking order and have them selected and moved around at the same time. And once you apply the puppet warp, it will show up here underneath the smart object as a smart filter, and it can very quickly be turned off or turned back on. But the distortions that we applied originally with the split warp is still there. The only problem is once you use another smart filter, you won't actually be able to access it. So if I use free transform now, notice that the warp option is disabled. So in case you need to get back to it, but you also don't want to lose your puppet warp, what I recommend to do is to duplicate your smart object. So that's command or control J and then right click, clear smart filter from one of the instances. On this one, we can use the free transform and the warp, make our changes, accept those changes, and then simply drag the puppet warp onto this updated version. So this is a little bit of a workaround and it can be a pain if you need to do it often, but at least it keeps both of these techniques non-destructive. And this is really just scratching the surface of what you can achieve with split warp. Of course, there's so much additional things you can do, but in this tutorial, I just wanted to go through all the important shortcuts and methods in which way you can use it in your own creative projects. If you create something with these techniques and you would like to share it with me, make sure you use hashtag yes, I'm a designer when sharing it on social media. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.